The Gillette Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. Additional descriptive words used today. This is the seventh game of the World Series, and this is the game. Both clubs have won three, and today we find the winner taking the jewels, taking the title, and being the champion of all baseball as far as the American and National League is concerned. Another bright, brilliant fall afternoon here in Yankee Stadium with the temperature in the high 60s, the sun shining brightly, and uh, on the sidelines, we have two left-handers, Johnny Padres working for the Brooklyn Dodgers, Tommy Byrne working for the New York Yankees. Padres will be making his second appearance in the World Series. He has one victory, and Tommy Byrne is working in his second game, and he has one victory. Byrne pitched in the second game of the series. He beat the Dodgers here in Yankee Stadium. Padres pitched over in Ebbets Field, and he beat the Yankees over there. So today, Johnny Padres tries to break the jinx that the Dodgers have not been able to win a game in Yankee Stadium. Now, here are the lineups for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Junior Gilliam will lead off and play in left field. Pee Wee Reese will be at shortstop and bat second. Duke Snyder, who had to leave yesterday's game in the third inning when he popped something in his knee, is going to give it a try. He's all taped up. He will bat third. He will play center field. Roy Campanella will catch and bat fourth. Carl Frillo will be in right field. Gil Hodges will be at first base, Don Hoke at third, Don Zimmer at second, and Johnny Padres will be the pitcher. The United States Marines have a color guard out in center field. And ladies and gentlemen, join with us now as we hear our national anthem. Our national anthem. you the lineup for the Brooklyn Dodgers and now for the homestanding New York Yankees Phil Rizzuto will lead off and play shortstop. Billy Martin will play second base and bat second Gil McDougal will bat third and of course play third base. 
Yogi Berra will bat fourth and catch. And Yogi Berra, by the way, is the only member of either lineup who has hit safely in all games. Hank Bauer will play right field, and he will bat fifth. Batting sixth is Bill Scowron, the big, strong right-hand batter who yesterday hit a home run to the opposite field. Bob Serve will be in center field. Elston Howard will be in left field, and Tommy Byrne, the left-hander, the veteran, will go against the youngster, Johnny Padres, the left-hander. So today will be a Southpaw's holiday, and the Brooklyn Dodgers will try to prove that, uh, well, they can win this World Series. Padres now has concluded his warm-up tosses, and Tommy Byrne wants to get in a few more licks to make sure that that arm is just right. The wind is blowing in the direction of left field, and it's a slight breeze high up, not too much wind down below on the playing field. The center field flag not flaring out too much, but the flags up on top of the roof where the wind can get to them are full out, which would signify that the velocity is about 10 miles per hour. The day is slightly hazy, although the sun is shining brightly, and there's a slight shade of gray cloud way off to the left, but over to the right, it's nice and clear. The umpires for today's game, the final game of the 1955 World Series. Jim Honachick will call the balls and strikes. Umpire Lee Balafant of the National League will be at third base. Bill Summers of the American League will be at second base. Frank Descoli of the National League will be at first base. Down the left field line is John Flaherty of the American League, and down the right field line is Augie Donatelli of the National League. The New York Yankees come busting out of their dugout. And the song, Symbolic of Baseball, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, gives them a serenade as they trot to their positions. The Brooklyn Dodgers send out Junior Gilliam, and uh, now ready to take us along in the first four and a half innings of this, the big game in the World Series, is Al Helfer. Bob, awful sorry to see that you have such a heavy chest cold, fella. Hi, everybody. Yes, we're ready for the final game of the World Series, 1955. And for the past 24 hours, it has been said over and over across this great land of ours, this is it. But the phrase bears repeating. And it is it here at the Yankee Stadium this afternoon. We'll know, here a couple of hours, who the world champions are going to be. And before we get this one started with the Wake Forest Deacon going out to take the mound now for the New York Yankees, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Time now for the concluding game of the 1955 World Series. The lineups is given you by Bob Neal, are correct. Gilliam will lead off for the Brooklyn Dodgers. He'll be in left field. Reese at shortstop. Hitting third despite a bad knee, and it's heavily taped. Is Duke Snyder. He'll be in center. Roy Campanella, the catcher. Carl Perillo in right. Hodges will be the first baseman hitting sixth. Hitting seventh, Don Hope, taking the place of Jackie Robinson at third base. Then will come Don Zimmer at second base, hitting eighth, and the number nine hitter for the Brooklyn Dodgers, the pitcher from Weatherby, New York, left-hander Johnny Padres. Padres on the regular season, a nine and ten winner, and in World Series play, one and one. Facing Tommy Byrne, who has won 16 and lost 5 in the regular season, and he's 1 0 in the series this year. As far as these two men are concerned, in the 1955 World Series, Byrne has pitched nine full innings. He's given up two runs, five hits. He's passed five. He struck out six. He's pitched, well, pitched no times. For Johnny Padres, his record is um, equally impressive. He's pitched nine innings, given up three runs, seven hits, passed two, struck out six. He's, well, pitched no times. So we're expecting a humdinger of a ball game here this afternoon at the Yankee Stadium. As Bob told you, the wind blowing out toward left field, it's not much of a wind and will not help or hinder fly balls hit into that sector to any great degree. Bright, brilliant, sunshiny autumn day here in New York City and uh, many of the folks sitting out in the center field sector and in the left field bleachers are sitting out there without their coats in this warm sunshine. Back under the protective overhang of the stadium, of course, the folks have draped themselves in at least suit coats. Umpire Jim Honachek behind the plate here for the final game has called for the first batter and Jim Gilliam, a switch hitter, steps up. Jim batting right-handed against left-hander Tommy Byrne. Gilliam has six base hits for 20 trips to the plate in the series and he's batting at an even 300. So the bat will be on the fire now as Tommy Byrne takes his sign from Yogi Berra to get the seventh and concluding game of the 1955 World Series underway. 
Byrne tugs at the peak of his cap, gets himself set, checks his infield and outfield. Looks over at Skyron at first base, checks Martin at second, looks at Rizzuto at short. Down at third, McDougal playing a shallow third. The outfield, Nelson Howard in left, Bob Serve in center, and Hank Bauer in right. The battery for the Yankees, Tommy Byrne on the mound. Behind the plate is Yogi Berra. Now we're ready to go. Byrne pumps once, delivers a fastball. It's in there for a strike. So the history books have the pages laid open. The record books are ready to receive whatever is to be written in them within the next three hours. Dump out first base is Descoli, and second is Bill Summers. Down third is Lee Ballenfant. Along the left field line, it's Red Flaherty. Down the right field line, I'll get on the telly. The pitch, a curveball, slammed back over the mound. Rizzuto coming in fast and short, picks up, throws to first base in time, and Gilly Mitchell. High chopper hit back in the mound. Rizzuto handled it very neatly. That'll bring on Reese. The Dodger captain and shortstop has seven base hits for 23 attempts in the World Series this year and batting at 3-0-4. One out, the base is empty, top of the first inning, no score. Just getting underway here at the Yankee Stadium. Tommy Byrne with his assortment of slow stuff and a clever slider. Veteran gets ready, delivers to Reese. There's that slider over for a strike. Byrne mucking around out to mound, takes his time. Yogi Berra stays down in the crouch, pumping the sign. The outfield for Reese plays him slightly shaded around to right. They figure he might poke into right field, and he usually does. He'll reach for that outside pitch. The 0-1 delivery to him. Curveball swung on by Reese, hung out into center field. Bob Serve coming on to get the range. Whacks the mitt, reaches up and takes it for out number two. Two down, top half of inning number one. No base runners, and the batter is Duke Snyder. Duke kind of limping up to the plate. Gets a round of applause here from the thousands of that. Watched him thrill the crowd in the previous games of this World Series. Duke has eight hits for 22 attempts in the series, batting at 364. He's hit four home runs and has driven in seven runs. Stands there, waggles that bat, and Tommy Byrne comes in with the first pitch of fastball. It's on the outside for ball one. Two down, nobody on here in the top of the first inning. Series all locked to three games apiece, and this is the deciding one. Burn is set now. 35-year-old left-hander pumps twice. Delivers, fastball, and Snyder rips it down to the right side. Martin off to his left, picks up, throws to first, and Snyder is out. So the Brooklyn Dodgers go down here in the first inning. But nothing across. No runs, no hits. There were no Yankee errors. Nobody was left on. The score at the end of the top of the first inning is Brooklyn nothing to now coming to bat New York Yankees nothing. Now the Yankees to come up for their wax in the last half of the first inning. Scoreless ball game. And the Yankees will send up as their first man, lead offer, shortstop Phil Rizzuto. He'll be followed by Martin and then by McDougal. If anybody gets on, Yogi Berra hitting in the number four position will be coming up. Phil Rizzuto today playing in his 52nd World Series game in his ninth series, breaking Joe DiMaggio's record for the most games played. Johnny Padres comes down with his first pitch and lays it in there high for ball one. Rizzuto has three for 12 in the series, batting at 250. Swings on this pitch, soft curveball. It's popped up right off to the right of the plate in foul territory. Campanella skipping over a bat, makes the catch. And we have the first off in the last half of any number one. The batter is Billy Martin. The old corporal has hit seven for 22 tries, batting at 318. Right-hand hitter stands about three-quarters deep with a straightaway stance, lays the bat back on his right shoulder. Takes a curveball. It's high up for the face. One ball, no strikes. Billy Martin, when he takes his batting stance, reminds me somewhat of the batting stance that was taken at one time by Hank Greenberg, great star with Detroit. The one-all delivery. He's hung on by Martin and missed. One ball, one strike. 
Rodgers fed that close to the vest. Martin tried to pull away from it and hit it. Outfield just about straight away. They're not playing too deep for Martin. Soft curve. Swung on. Hit down the left field line. Gilliam coming over near the stands in the corner. Makes the catch. And Martin is out. Two down. Last half of the first inning. The batter now will be third baseman Gil McDougal. Gil has only four base hits in the series in 23 attempts. He's batting at 174. He has hit one home run and has driven in one of the 25 runs batted in the Yankees now possess. Two down, the base is empty, last half of the first inning. Gil McDougal hitting right hand. Left foot forward to the plate, crouches. Takes a curveball downstairs inside off the shoe tops. One ball, no strikes. Waters apparently tried his slider on that one. The 1 0 delivery, an overhand curveball, and Gill starts for it and checks up in time to take it low for ball two. We're expecting to see some fancy pitching here this afternoon with these two left handers going. Padres working now. It's 2 0 count. Delivers and fires it across for a strike. An overhand fastball. Johnny delivers the biggest end of his pitches from the overhand position. He'll come in three quarters overhand with some of them, particularly when he throws his slider. 2 1 delivery by Johnny Podrace. Let up curveball and overhand delivery is low. And the count now is 3 and 1 on Gil McDougal. Two down, last half of the first, no base runners, and no score between the Yankees and the Dodgers in the seventh and concluding game of the 55 series. All the action coming to you from the Yankee Stadium this afternoon. Padres delivers an overhand fastball, swung on a miss, first strike two. Now a full count to Gil McDougal, three balls and two strikes. So that Safety Razor Company of Boston, very happy to be able to send you the action from the Yankee Stadium this afternoon and all the action throughout the 1955 World Series. Padres ready. Here's his three and two delivery. Slow curve for ball strike three. So McDougal is out of there. And that's all for the Yankees in the last half of the first inning as Johnny Padres hangs up his first strikeout today in his seventh in this World Series. It's a piggyback cat, piggyback joke, just paper-made, built-in fair refill. Old paper has a new pen. There's none to compare. With the piggyback refill. You've always a spare. With two points. Two ink supplies. If you're student, policeman, or clerk, you can be sure with a paper-made. You'll always finish your work. No more aggravation. You won't tear out your hair. See the demonstration of the piggyback fair. Paper makes a dollar ninety-five. It's the most. It's the end. Why, man, alive! Five paper makes. You'll say it's great when you write with the paper makes pen. It's a piggyback cat, piggyback joke, just paper makes built-in fair Well, it's right into the top half of the second inning now. The first man up for the Brooklyn Dodgers will be Roy Campanella, batting at 250 in the series. Roy has six hits for 24 tries, and if you recall, he went 0 for 8. First eight times up, couldn't get a piece of the ball hardly. But then he broke out of it with a home run at Ebbets Field. For Campanella, the outfield plays just about straight away. The big hole in the outfield, if there is a hole, is in right center. Campy with a slightly open stance down the third base line seems to put his right toe deep in batter's box under the left knee of Yogi Berra. Holds that bet way down by the knob. Pittler coaching at first, Herman at third, both clapping her hands together trying to get something started. Burn delivers a soft curve and Campy takes it outside for ball one. Roy kicks him out out of his spikes, caresses the bat, and grabs a hold of the handle as if to strangle it. Oh, they want an old delivery. Fastball, and Campanella hits it down to the right side. Billy Martin is in front of it, takes the high hopper, and throws to first, and Campanella is out. One away in the top of the second inning. The batter is Carl Perillo. 
Carl Perillo in this series owns one home run here at the Yankee Stadium. He hit it in the first ball game when he went uh, three for four. Got a home run and two singles. Of the 24 times Carl has been at bat, he has eight base hits. His percentage stands at 333. Three runs batted in the series. Right hand batter hugs up pretty tight against the plate with a straightaway stance. Tommy Byrne, if throws all that soft, easy stuff at you, comes in with one, and Carl Perillo's after, lifts it out to left field. Going off to his left and back is Elston Howard, and makes a nice catch going away. So they're two down here in the top of the second inning. The bats on both sides of the fence have been uh, rather silent so far. Gil Hodges. Batting at 273, comes up there. He's hit one home run in the series. Poked it over the right center field scoreboard at Ebbets Field. He has six for 22 as a batsman in the series. So he steps up to the plate right now. The bases are empty, two are down. We're in the top of the second, there is no score. Burn ready, working to a right hand batter, throws a fastball that misses outside and high. One ball and no strikes. The wind has kicked up a little more now. Coming in from behind right field, blowing across the diamond and out behind left. Burn throws one and all. Big curve ball. It stays low. Two balls, no strikes. has signed for the pitch and Burns about to throw it. It's a 2 and all affair and it's a curveball that stays outside. Missing by a shade for ball three. Three and nothing on Hodges. Bases empty, two down, top of the second. Hodges with his closed stance. Looks at this pitch outside and half a ball four. So Hodges draws a base on balls and this will bring up Don Hope. That's the first base on balls issued by either pitcher. The first for Byrne today and the fifth to make it the sixth in the series for him. Don Hope was used as a pinch hitter. So let me check back and make absolutely certain about his having been used as a pinch hitter. I do know he came in to run. He walked when he was used as a pinch batter before here at the Yankee Stadium. He's after the first pitch and hits a foul ball off to the right of the plate that goes into the crowd out of play. Like Don Zimmer, this guy Don Hoke is quite a pepper pot and quite a hustler. As far as his batting percentage was concerned, it uh, fell off at the tail end of the season. Don can hit the ball for you and can hit the long ball. Batted at 240 on the regular season. Hit five home runs and had 19 runs batted in. Pretty good base runner. He had nine steals. Gil Hodges at first, two down, top of the first, top of the second inning, no score. Tommy Byrne for the first time pitching with a man on the bases. That doesn't seem to bother the Deacon too much. He delivers and Hoke takes a curve in there for a strike. Nothing and two. The count on third baseman Don Hope taking the place of Jackie Robinson this afternoon. Jackie has come up with a bad Achilles tendon in his heel. Shouldn't have played yesterday, but he wanted to play, and manager Austin needed him. So he went ahead, and the result is he cannot play today. He may be used as a pinch hitter. Next pitch is swung on. There's a bounding ball hit solid to the right side. Martin over to pick up. Throws to first, and Hope is up. So Martin gobbled that one up very well. Here in the second inning, slight threat of the Dodgers goes for the boards. The threat that was set up by the walk to Hodges. No runs, no hits. No errors, one man was left off. So the score at the end of one and a half innings of play remains. The Brooklyn Dodgers nothing, and the homestanding New York Yankees have nothing. Look sharp, feel sharp. Be sharp and listen, mister. How are you fixed for play? Do that play. How are you fixed for play? You better check. Make 
In the last half of the second inning, the first batsman up for the Yankees will be their number four hitter in the order, Yogi Berra, hitting at 450. Padres tries a fastball on him and whistles it in there for a strike. Berra has nine base hits for 20 at-bats, and this hit one home run. Left-hand batter standing deep. Padres tries the curve on him and swung on, hit out to center field. Duke Snyder limping over under it and makes the catch. Rivera lines out to Duke Snyder in center. Up to the plate now comes Hank Bauer, one of the fine Yankee competitors. Hank in World Series play this year has six hits for ten tries. He's batting at 600. Has one run batted in. Padres fires the fastball at him and gets it over for a strike. Bauer came back to the wars, but good yesterday. He had uh, three base hits, all singles, and four times up. That's right near par, par of the course. Swings on a curveball and hits it sort of off the end of the bat. It's a roller down to second. Zimmer comes up with it, throws to first, and Bauer's up. Two Yankees up, two Yankees down here in the second inning. Big Moose Scourin in the first inning off Spooner yesterday hit a three-run home run. But he coming up to the plate now, batting at 375 in the series. Three hits. Four eight times up, including that home run. Scott's a pretty good sized guy, pretty strong. Right hand hitter. Takes a slow curve pumped in there, and it's low for ball one. Scott is sort of nervous and fidgety at the plate, always on the move, leans over and holds about high off his shoulder. Fast ball swung on by Scar and drilled out along the right field line. It bounces and up into the crowd for an automatic two-bagger. Ground rules double for our Moose Scarin. Hit an outside pitch to right and on one hop, caromed up into the stand. There's the first hit in the ball game. Given up by Padres. That's his eighth in uh, the series. And Bob Serve is coming up to the plate. Two down, Scourin is on at second and serve up there, batting at 167. Station break. Rogers, Texas runner, Scourin at second. Delivers to Bob Serve, a fastball, swung and a miss for a strike. Served it in there right around the letters. Bob served two hits and 12 tries, including a home run, which he hit as a pinch hitter at Ebbets Field. Padres ready with the 0-1 delivery. Checks his runner, Skyron. Delivers a play to soft curve. Swing and a miss for strike two. Serve lost his bat on that one. Padres set him up with a fastball and then fired that slow, tantalizing curve at him, and serve was way out ahead of it. Padres leading with Roy Campanella. Now the conference is broken up. Campy comes stomping back behind the plate. Padres goes back to the mound. Scourin, who doubled here in the second with two down, is the base runner at second, making the lead. Outfield fan around the left and playing deep. The serve can clout that ball if he gets a hold of it. Padres peers down, takes the 0-2 sign. Checks his runner, fires away at the plate, a curveball, swung on, hit down to shortstop. Reese up with it, throws to first in time, and that's all in the second inning. The serve goes down. So in the second, no runs. One base hit, a double by Skyron. One man was left on, there were no errors. Score at the end of two innings of play now. It's Yankees nothing and Brooklyn nothing. Tommy Byrne comes to the mound now to start the third inning. He'll pitch to Zimmer, Padres, and Gilliam in that order. But before we get started, let's quickly pause for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Second baseman Don Zimmer coming up to the plate for his first at-bat of the afternoon, hitting number eight in the Brooklyn order. He's had two base hits and seven tries in the series. Has driven in two runs, and he's batting at 286. Little right-hand hitter who holds a heavy bat way down to the end. He'll be followed by Johnny Padres, the pitcher, and then we'll go to the top of the batting order for Jim Gilliam. 
A scoreless duel here. We've had only one base hit in the entire game. The Yankees picked it up on Moose Garin's double in the second. So Tommy Byrne gets ready now to begin inning number three. Byrne sets, fires it in there, and the pitch is swung on, dragged across the carpet to short. Rizzuto off to his left, up with it, makes the throw to first in plenty of time, and Zimmer is out. One away, top of the third. Johnny Padres in uh, the World Series this year has had one hit in three at-bats. So he's batting at 333. Johnny Padres getting the round of applause he richly deserves. Both of these pitchers have been old man ice water and old man tough this afternoon. Right up to this minute. Padres standing in about... As deep in batter's box as law will allow. Bends over. Byrne throws him the slider and gets it in there for a strike. No balls, one strike. One out, nobody on, top of the third, no score. Byrne pumps, delivers, fastball, swung on and missed for strike two. Byrne working right back to Padres on the 0-2 count. Throws a curveball. It's popped right back here by cameras. Right off to the left of us. Somebody almost got that one. Here at the series this year, we share a booth with a television camera. We've been talking to it right along, but the thing never ashes his back. The 0-2 delivery now to Johnny Padres. Byrne is ready. So is Yogi Berra. One out, nobody on, top of the third. Overhand curveball, slammed down to the right side on two big hops. Billy Martin makes the play on it. Goes to first, and that's all for Padres. Two men up, two men quietly down in the third inning. Jim Gilliam rolled out to shortstop to begin things for the Dodgers in the first inning, so he's making his second appearance. Six for 21 in the series. Against the left-hand offerings of Tommy Byrne, of course, Gilliam is batting right-handed. Oh, Casey Stengel down there, pacing back and forth in the Yankees' dugout. Byrne delivers a soft curveball that Gilliam takes low for ball one. Some of the pictures that have been uh, taken and printed of Casey Stengel's meanderings in the dugout have been something. Fastball, stride on Gilliam, and a shoulder high outside for ball two. You ought to hear old Case lecture to his boys, too. Oh, me. Burns sets, looks at Gilliam, comes down to him on the 2-0 count, misses with a fastball outside, and that's ball three. So a two down, Gilliam has gotten ahead of Byrne on a 3 nothing count. No score in this one so far. Byrne delivers 3-0. His pitch is low outside for ball four. That's a second walk given up for the Deacon. Well, the Dodgers find themselves with their second base runner. Byrne did the same thing after getting Campanella and Perillo. He walked Hodges, then Hope rolled out behind Hodges to retire the side. About an hour is Pee Wee Reese. Reese flied to center field in the first inning to Bob serve. So Pee Wee's over one. Burn back to visit the Rosenbag. Comes up to the mound now. Looks over at Gilliam, who's a pretty good base runner. Scourin, the first baseman, holds the inside corner on Jim. Descoli's the umpire there to call the play. 
Pitch to the plate is taken outside by Reese for ball one. to the top of the stretch again with a check of the runner and a pitch to the plate to Reese and he lays it in there for a call first strike. Reese takes a check at third. See what Billy Herman has on the way of signs. This is the Dodgers outstanding hit and run combination. Get him on and Reese up at the, up the plate. 1-1 one, one count. There's the pitch. Over to Reese for strike two. Byrne came along with a medium speed curveball. Reese didn't even offer to pull the trigger. Gilliam leads off at first now with hands on hips. Now he leans over, puts his hands on his knees. The pitch to Reese is swung on. A hit foul off to the right of the plate to the crowd out of play, and the count holds at one and two. No score on the ball game. We're in the top third inning. Two down for the Dodgers. They have a base runner in Gilliam at first base. The Yankees have had only one base runner. That's when Skyron doubled with two out the last half of last inning. He remained at second when served. Rolled out behind him from short first. So both of these pitchers are letting out just a little bit more this afternoon. Burn is set now with Barris Mitt as a target. The one and two delivery to Pee Wee Reese. Fastball swung on. Head out in the center field. Bob Serve off to his right. Takes the line drive to retire the side. So, a Dodger threat again goes for the boards. No runs with no base hits. No errors. One man was left on. Score at the end of two and a half innings. Yankees nothing and Brooklyn nothing. You know, you have to really take your cap off to Dick Snyder for his great play in the series. He's made some fantastic catches, and his big bat has spoken eloquently. You know, Duke shares the record for the most home runs in the series, uh, four of them with Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. But he's the only man to do it twice, according to the best pocket edition of the official Encyclopedia of Baseball. Now, this book contains a world of interesting baseball facts. It digests the big, comprehensive $5.95 volume, the accepted authority, and it's yours free with the Gillette Super Speed Razor at the regular price. Now, get a load of what this book contains. Major League roster with the records, nicknames, birth dates of active players, pitching and hitting records, Hall of Fame members, World Series summaries, all-star game results, Diagrams and seating arrangements of all Major League parks, record of every World Series player, and much, much more. For your free copy, buy the Gillette Super Speed Razor with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser and Travel Case at the regular price, $1. The book is attached and costs you nothing extra. Now the last half of any number three here. Elston Howard making his first appearance at the plate today, batting at 182. He's had four for 22 in the series, including a home run. He's after the first pitch and hits it back to the screen foul for strike one. A scoreless duel between Padres and Tommy Byrne. We've had only one hit in the ball game, and the Yankees own that one. An overhand pitch is swung on, lifted out into short center field. Coming on for it is Duke Snyder, and he's got the range and has the ball. Howard is out, one Yankee away in the third. Tommy Byrne hit one on the snoot in the ball game he pitched. That was the second game of the series here at the Yankee Stadium. He drove in two runs with a single, and that's the one hit he has in four attempts. Of course, Byrne has been used as a pinch hitter in this series also. Byrne came on and was a pinch hitter in the ninth inning of the fifth game. Last game at Ebbets Field. Rolled out in the inning. Thrown out from second base. So Byrne stands in. He's been used on occasion as a pinch hitter in regular season play also. I refer to him as the good hitting pitcher. Byrne will be followed by Rizzuto. The pitch to Byrne is ball one. 
Time is called. Byrne wants that ball examined. On a chick obliges, looks it over, and then fires it right back out to the mound to Padres. Apparently, Johnny has pretty good control of that ball, and his curve must be working pretty well. The 1 0 delivery. Medium speed fastball. It's a little inside. Two balls, no strikes on Byrne. The wearer of number 23. Two old delivery, fastball, high, ball three. So Johnny Padres having a little fit with his control right now. Wouldn't be a bit surprised that uh, pitcher's control might be the answer in this ball game, the way these two are going. There's fastball in there for a strike. The count on Byrne is three and one. Three-one delivery on Tommy Byrne. An overhand fastball. Hard through at the waist first strike. The count is three and two on the Yankee pitcher. Got one out here in the last half of third. No base runners, no score. Hits, runs, everything just about as scarce as hen's teeth. Slow curve is hit by Byrne down the left field line foul. That moves back to the crowd, and the count holds at three and two on Tommy. Padres with a new ball gets a sign from Campanella. Barnes standing away from the plate with a slightly open stance now down the first baseline. 3 2 pitch. Hold strike three. Drilled right through the middle of the knees. So Padres hangs up his second strikeout. Burn has yet to get a man via the strikeout route. The top of the Yankee batting order, starting their second go round, Phil Rizzuto. Phil had a soft curve and popped it up to the right of the plate to Campanella back in the first inning. Padres works the fastball on the scooter, and it's low for ball one. Padres shakes off one sign, accepts the second set. Works away at the plate, and Rizzuto backs off from a fastball in off the hands. Little fella has a count of two balls, no strikes. Both of these pitchers here this afternoon, both Padres and Byrne, appear to be just as quick as a cat. Well, hopping around out there. Padres delivers fastball, and this one misses low. Other well, count on Rizzuto is three and nothing, just the same as it was on Byrne. Well, let's see whether Padres is able to hang in there and uh, start racking up the strikes as he did on Tommy. Two down. Nobody on last half the third inning. No score. Padres overhand fastball is slow under the knees. That's ball four. So Rizzuto gets the first base on balls off Padres. Comes the base runner and uh, Billy Martin. Moves on. Martin hit a ball well in the first inning. Hit it into the corner in left field, but Jim Gilliam, pretty fleet of foot out there, was able to come over and make the catch right in the corner. So Martin is 0 for 1 in play today. Rizzuto on at first with two down. Padres checks him. Comes to the plate with a curveball, and Martin strides into it and doesn't offer as the pitch is high. One ball, no strikes. Rizzuto strides away from first. Padres pitches a slow curve to Martin, and this one's in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Yes, sir, I'm afraid we're sitting on a powder keg here this afternoon. The fuse has already been lighted. Now, I think it's just a matter of how long it goes until it blows up. 
Reese has come in and had his little uh, confab with pitcher Padres. He trots back now to his position. Rizzuto steps away from first to count his ball two on Billy Martin with two down here in the last half of third. There's a throw to first, and Rizzuto scoots in ahead of it. Hodges returns the ball to Padres, and Johnny climbs up to the rubber and looks down the barrel of, at uh, Martin. Rizzuto's lead at first. In comes the pitch. Martin takes over for a strike. Martin tried to uh, con umpire Honachik off that one by giving a slight jackknife backward. Jim was looking down over the shoulder of Campanella and called it right up. Two and one is the count on Martin. Budras checks his runner, delivers. Martin swings, hits a ball out into the right field. It's going to be in for a base hit. Perillo comes along, picks it up, and Rizzuto holds it second. Hit number two up, Padres. Martin slapping one, and a looper out into right field. So a two down. The Yankees have runners at first and second now. They're making their bid. Gil McDougal coming up, and Walter Austin comes off the Dodger bench and walks to the mound to talk to Padres. We're going to have some activity down in the bullpen for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Let's see who's going to go to work. Don Besson is up now throwing. There's another pitcher also throwing. It could be Newcomb. But we can see over in the far side of the runway shoot back of left field just the uh, head and right arm of Don Besson throwing. Johnny Potters is going to stay in the ball game. He'll pitch to Gil McDougald, whom he got on uh, strike three called in the first inning. One of the two Padres strikeouts. Situation in the third with no score is Martin at first, Rizzuto at second, and two down. Padres ready to work to Gil McDougal. Delivers, big soft curve, and this one is low. Ball one. to the top of the stretch now. Check of the runners. The pitch to the plate to McDougal. High this time for ball two. Both of uh, Padres' pitches were slow curveballs. Let's see if Padres feeds up fast when they're now to McDougal. Campanella is down to call for that pitch and Padres nods. He's ready to uh, go to work with Campanella, then McDougal steps away for the moment and calls for time. Rizzuto at second, ready to travel. Billy Martin ready to move off at first. Two down, last half of the third, no score. Padres is ready. Looks down and delivers. McDougal takes one, fired through for a strike. Two balls, one strike is the count on Gil McDougal, the number three hitter in the Yankee order. Padres checks, delivers two and one, a soft curveball. It's inside for ball three. Three balls, one strike. Padres wading around in hot water knows it. Doesn't want this guy to get away from him. So he asks Campanella again for the set of signs he's flashed. Takes him, goes to the top of the stretch. Here's the 3 1 pitches. The runners break, swung on. There's a bounding ball deep behind third foul that Hope knocks down. A 3 2 count on Gil McDougal. The runners were breaking that time on 3 1. So old Case is playing this one down to the hill, isn't he? Count on McDougal, three balls and two strikes. Two on, two down, last of the third, no score. The Yankees own the only two base hits in the ballgame. 
Johnny Padres, a great big heave and a sigh out on the mound. Goes to the top of the stretch. Checks his runners, particularly Rizzuto at second. The pitch is made as the runners break. Hit down the hook at third. And the ball hits the runner. Hits the runner, Phil Rizzuto. So that is going to be the third out in the inning. McDougal will be given credit for a single. So Rizzuto hit for the batted ball is the third out. Well, no runs in the third inning for the New York Yankees. They did come up with a pair of base hits, and there were two men left on. There were no errors. The score at the end of three. Brooklyn nothing. The Yankees have nothing. Well, this ball game here continues to be just about as tight as it possibly can be. And in the fourth inning, and a nothing nothing ball game, Duke Snyder will start it off for Brooklyn. For the Yankees, no runs, three hits. For Brooklyn, no runs, no hits. Oh, well, Tommy Byrne comes out to see if he can't continue to spin the web. Folks are sitting around, just waiting for something to happen. And it will. Burn is ready. Duke Snyder up there. He's over one. Swings on his first pitch and it's a high foul ball off the first baseline. Skyrin over to the crowd. Cannot get it. It's back about three rows. Strike one. The count on Snyder. He retired to side in the first inning by rolling down to the right side, and second baseman Billy Martin threw him out. Duke playing today with a bandaged knee, despite the fact he's suffering with it. He made the statement last night that if he could walk, he would play. Well, he's playing. Byrne comes in with an overhand fastball, and Snyder checks his swing in time and takes the ball. Pitch is rolling outside. Duke started to chase that one. On a chick. Immediately looked to see how far he'd gone around. The count on Duke, one ball and one strike. Byrne relieving the pressure with a great big sigh. Starts his motion. Delivers one and one to the Duke. An overhand curve. Swung on and missed for strike two. Snyder will be followed by Campanella and then by Carl Ferrillo. So it's sort of the meat end of the batting order for, for Brooklyn. It's swung out again and missed. Strike three. Well, Snyder was up there really waving the willow. That'll be the first strikeout for Byrne in the game. That'll give him a total of seven in this series. And Roy Campanella comes up there. Here's a fellow that pretty much knows what he wants and how to go about getting it. Cappy's got a lot of interest, and he can get what he wants all right. It's natural that he shaves with the up-to-the-minute Gillette Super Speed Razor. Takes a curve. It's outside. Sir, Cappy knows one thing. That's shaving luxury. One old delivery to Campanella. Swung on. There's a line drive hit over third base down into the corner. Campanella is down to second. Elson Howard comes up with the ball. Campy's going to keep on going. The ball gets away from Howard. And Campy moves into second. Let's see how the score puts this one up on the board. Roy Campanella being given a double into the left field corner. There's the first Brooklyn hit. Hit number one off Byrne. That'll be the sixth hit he's given up in the series play this year. And the batter is Carl Perillo. So with one out, Campanella is in scoring position at second. And Carl Perillo, who sent a fly ball to left field to Elston Howard, his first time up, that was in the second. 
Carl Perillo coming up. At game time, he was hitting in the series at 333. Tommy Byrne in his first spot of the afternoon. Delivers to the plate and Perillo swings on a curveball and drills this one down the left field line to the crowd foul. That had the distance, but was pulled too much. That sort of electrified everybody here at the Yankee Stadium. Well, this will be a battle this afternoon, and regardless of which side of the fence you happen to be on, you'll be able to see good plays, good strategy on both sides of the fence. And you'll see determination. Competition, competitiveness. You see it all here this afternoon. Tommy Byrne wants a new ball to work with now as he faces Carl Perillo on the 0-1 count. Campanella, who runs a little faster than most people think he can, steps off at second. Tommy Byrne back to visit the Rosenbach before pitching to Carl Perillo. Carl has three runs batted in in the series. Leans over the plate. Sticks that chin of his out. Byrne delivers to him a fastball that's high and outside. One ball and one strike. Cappy strides away from second. His lead isn't big. He's playing it pretty close to the best. Byrne checks him, then delivers the plate, and Ferrillo takes under the knees. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. One out, one on, no score. Is set, delivers, and Ferrillo leans into a slow pitch that stays outside. As he doesn't offer, he takes ball three. Three balls and one strike. Campanella going back to get a spike full of second base. Byrne wandering around the mound, looks at him. Ferrillo digging back in with that straightaway stance. Gets his feet planted. Spikes ground in. Byrne up on top. Delivers. It swung on. There's another line shot into the crowd foul on back of left field. 3-2 count on Carl Ferrillo. Tommy Byrne massaging up a new ball. Carl Ferrillo... Getting set. Beats that bat down on the rubber home plate. Measures off. Campanella takes his lead at second. Byrne is ready. The 3-2 pitch to Ferrillo. Fastball swung on. Dribbled up toward shortstop. Rizzuto's going to have to hurry. He comes up with the ball. Makes his play first. They have Ferrillo. And going over to third base is Roy Campanella. And before Hodges comes up there, let's quickly pause for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is Al Helper along with Bob Neal back at Yankee Stadium. Ready to continue now in the fourth inning is Casey Stengel. Comes uh, charged out of the Yankee dugout. He wants to talk to Tommy Byrne for a minute. Give him some instructions, probably, about how to go with Hodges, whom he walked back in the second inning. So Hodges coming up for his first official at-bat. The potential tie-breaking run is on at third base in Roy Campanella. There are two down in the top of the fourth inning. Tommy Byrne has given up just one base hit. That was Roy Campanella's double. Well, with one out here in the fourth inning, Roy hit it into the left field corner. Gil Hodges standing in. He's wrapped in three runs for the Dodgers in the series. He's hit one home run. Byrne checks his runner at third. 
The left-hander pumps and throws, and Hodges takes a curve. It's been in over the fist for a strike. Burn is ready. Comes down on one to the plate with a soft curve in for called strike two, right across at the waist. Hodges just turns and walks away. No balls, two strikes. A count on first baseman Gil Hodges. Roy Campanello down at third. Gil McDougal is back to his fielding depth. He's not holding Campy on. They're playing for the out. The 0-2 delivery. Burn throws. It's taken just high for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Hodges, a pretty good plate guardian. Byrne, who has found control. Ready to pitch one and two. Delivers. Pitch is swung on. There's a high fly ball. Hit foul off the third baseline. That'll go back into the second tier. Out of play. Down holds on Hodges. At a ball and two strikes. Gil McDougall coming back to his fielding depth behind third. He's just about three steps off the line. Rizzuto deep in the hole at shortstop. Outfield fan around the left and playing deep for Hodges. The big hole in the outfield is in right center. And occasionally Hodges hits in that direction. Now Gill is set and so is Tommy Byrne. Yankee pitcher checks his runner at third, Campanella. Delivers one and two to the plate to Hodges. Fastball swung on, hit out into left field. It's in for a base hit. Roy Campanella comes on the score, and the books lead it one to nothing. Gil Hodges gets his fourth RBI of the series. And gets a second hit here this afternoon off Burn. The hit which cost Tommy a run. The batter coming up is Don Hoke with two down. Hodges at first. Hoke retired the side in the second by hitting a bounding ball to Billy Martin at second and being thrown out. Hoke digging in. He's a belligerent type of ball player, this Hoke. Takes a curve ball. It stays up above the letters. That's ball one. Billy Martin, Don Hoke, Don Zimmer, they're all in the same mold, the same type of ball player. Curve ball, swung on by Hoke and missed first strike. One ball, one strike. I guess when a fellow really wants to play baseball, really wants to get out there and dig and fight and try, he can be labeled very quickly. This Martin on the right side of that Yankee infield has really been something, hasn't he? Now the 1-1 delivery by Tommy Byrne. Then it comes to Hope. Third ball swung on and hit down to third. Up with it is Gil McDougal throws unerringly to first, and the inning is over. So well, that's all here in the fourth inning for Brooklyn. However, they break the barrier. One run. There were two base hits in the inning. There were no Yankee errors. And one Dodger left on to strand three down, going to bat four times. Score at the end of three and a half innings of play. Brooklyn won. The New York Yankees, nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Gillette presents the sharpest edges ever honed. To look sharp every time you shave, to feel sharp and be on the ball, just be sharp. To Gillette, who plays for the quickest, quickest shave of all. Gillette blue blades are made to fit your razor to a T. Just 
approaching a deficit of one run, the New York Yankees come to bat here in the last half of the fourth inning. They'll send up Yogi Berra, Hank Bauer, and Moose Gowrin. Johnny Padres, who has given up three base hits to the Yankees so far, is ready to face Yogi, whom he got in the second inning on a line drive to center field to Duke Snyder. Padres delivers, and Berra, hitting left-handed, takes a fastball, drilled under the knees for ball one. The right side of the infield pulled to the line and deep. The outfield way around the right and very deep. The big hole in the outfield is down the left field line for Barron. Fastball, and Yogi after it hits a high pop-up out into center field. Coming over for us, Jim Gilliam. Duke Snyder's there, and it both allowed the ball to drop. Yogi Barron winding up a second. Yogi Berra popped one out into left center field. Duke Snyder was calling for it all the way, and Jim Gilliam coming over also, kept right on coming. And at the last minute, then Duke Snyder, to keep from running into his left fielder, stayed off. And at the very last split second, Gilliam fell away, and the ball dropped between the two of them for a double. So Yogi Berra is on at second base, representing the tying run for the New York Yankees. And that will be hit number four of Padres. And the batter is Hank Bauer. So now the clutch has come as far as Padres is concerned. Hank Bauer standing in. He's grounded out to Don Zimmer. His only time up today. Padres ready. Delivers to him. Bauer swings on this. Hits it out to right field. Carparillo off to his right. Under it. Makes the catch. Yogi Berra has to come back to second. Carparillo whips that ball into second baseman Zimmer. One out. Last half of the fourth inning. The tying run still riding at second base. Bill Scarron, Yankee first baseman, who drilled a double to right field in the second inning. Becomes the Yankee batsman. Most standing in. Johnny Padres checks his runner. Back at second base. That's Yogi Berra. Looks down at the moose. Comes in with his first pitch, an overhand let up. It's high and outside for ball one. Padres ready. The one old delivery, soft curve, swung on by Scarron and missed. That's strike one. Moose started to go for that pitch long before it got to him, and he tried to slow up, but by that time it was too late. One ball, one strike. To count on Scarin. Yogi Berra stepping off at second. He's representing the tying run this one nothing ball game. Bartos checks him, throws to the plate. Big right hand hitter swings on the pitch and hits it down to the right side. Up with it to Zimmer. His only play will be to first base. They get Scarin, and moving over to third is Yogi Berra. So here's the same situation popped up for the Dodgers in the fourth inning. They had Campanella. At third base with two men down, and Hodges got him home with a single. Now let's see what Bob Serve is able to do for the Yankees. Serve retired to side in the second with Skyron at second base when he hit down to shortstop, reached the rim out. So he's over one. Padres delivers, fastball way inside. Ball one. Barra hugging pretty tight there to third base. Don Hoke playing just about two steps behind the bag and about a step and a half off the line. Now he comes over about three steps off the line. Padres delivers. Serve takes high. Two balls, no strikes. Two or nothing count on Bob Serve. Two down, last of the fourth. Brooklyn leading one to nothing. Bob Serve has a count of two balls, no strikes. Padres delivers to him. Soft curve and serve after it hits a long one, but it's foul down the left field line up to the second tier. Two and one.
Quadras grinding a new ball around the palms of his hands. Comes up to the top of the rubber now. Looks at Yogi Bar at third. Delivers 2-1 to the plate to serve. He swings on it and pops it up. Out into left center field it goes. And Reese is after this one. Everyone stand away from the Pee-wee and he's got it. So Padres gets out of the inning. No run. One base hit. There were no errors. One man was left on. The Yankees have now stranded four and going to bat four times. The score at the end of four full innings of play. Brooklyn won. And the Yankees have nothing. Tommy Byrne now, one run behind, faces the Brooklyn Dodgers in the top of the fifth inning. We'll have Zimmer up there, followed by Johnny Padres, and then the top of the batting order in Jim Gilliam. Going into the fifth inning, the four inning totals read, Brooklyn one run, two hits, no errors. The Yankees no runs, four hits, and no errors. Don Zimmer came up in the third inning as a leadoff man and grounded out to shortstop. So he's 0 for 1. Yogi Bear goes to the crotch now to pump the sign for Tommy Byrne to get this fifth inning started. Zimmer standing in, forward at the plate, close stance. Byrne delivers him, curveball, it's over. Let's strike one. At the beginning of the season, Little Zimmer was going after those curveballs quite a lot, but he's uh, been laying off them. Byrne tries another slow curve, and Zim goes after this one, doesn't get it. That's strike two. The 0-2 delivery to the Brooklyn second baseman is a curveball, and it is hit foul. Right down to the right of the plate. Nothing and two on Don Zimmer. Noddy right now on the diamond is uh, Tommy, Tommy Byrne, the wearer of number 23, pitching to Don Zimmer, the wearer of number 23. They right now don't feel as though they have anything akin at all. Yo to delivery from Tommy Byrne to Don Zimmer will be coming right up. Tommy starts his pumping motion. The left-hander throws. Another curveball. This one's outside. One ball, two strikes. Burn one and two is the plate on Zimmer. With his fastball, and Zim swings and misses for strike three. One out in the top of the fifth inning. That's the second strikeout for Burn. His other strikeout victim is Snyder. Round of applause for Johnny Padres as he comes on. Padres committed the second out in the third inning for Brooklyn when he rolled to the right side and Martin took his bounding ball and tossed him out. Left-hand hitter standing in. One out, nobody on top of the fifth. Brooks one, the Yankees nothing. Fastball swung on by Padres and popped up right down the third baseline, midway between uh, home and third in foul territory. And McDougal handles it without any trouble whatsoever. So that's the second out. Jim Gilliam rolled a short in the first inning for the first out and then uh, came up in the third and walked. So he's 0 for 1. Two down, the base is empty, top of the fifth, and Gilliam the batter, hitting right handed. 1 to nothing to score in favor of Brooklyn. Tommy Byrne bends the first pitch into Gilliam. It's taken outside for ball one. Gilliam working up on the handle of the bat. Kind of fidgety with it, too. Lays it up off his right shoulder. Byrne one owes the plate. Curve ball in for a strike. One and one on Gilliam. Outfield straight away, not too deep. Elston Howard is the deepest of the outfielders, playing a straightaway left. Byrne delivers one and one. Gilliam swings on the pitch, hits it past the mound, over to his right is Martin, picks it out of the dirt, throws to first, and Gilliam is down. Well, that's all here in the fifth inning for the Brooklyn Dodgers. They go quietly. No runs, no hits. 
No errors, nobody left on, one strikeout in the inning for Burns. Score at the end of four and a half now. It is Brooklyn one, and the Yankees have nothing. Well, we've certainly had a whale of a ball game here right up to this moment. A one to nothing affair in favor of the Brooklyn Dodgers. There'll be more fireworks and plenty of action for the remaining of this one. Very happy to be able to turn the microphone over to our good sidekick, Bob Neal, who will be coming on. And, Bob, sorry that you uh, had that cold and feel badly today, but I'm sure the action will warm you up, buddy. So, come on, we'll all listen. Thank you, Al. And uh, we're certainly going to be... Watching every pitch now as Elston Howard steps in. Padres, the left-hander, delivers as a drive deep in the left field. Going back for his junior, Gilliam. Still going back. He reaches up. He's got it. And Elston Howard really started to warm things up quickly as he drives deep to junior Gilliam in front of the wall out in left field. Well, that shook up a few folks, including Johnny Padres, who heaves a couple of big sighs out there to make sure he's still breathing. Because Elston Howard made a bid to tie up this ball game and the Dodgers are leading one to nothing the Yankees have four hits three of which were legitimate one was slightly tainted when Duke Snyder and Junior Gilliam played Alphonse and Gaston in center field and the ball dropped behind him Snyder moving in waving for it Gilliam trying to help out knowing that the center fielder for the Dodgers had a bad knee and apparently didn't hear Snyder call and then Duke feeling Gilliam coming on, backed off, and the ball dropped. But no harm was done as Padres was able to get rid of Bauer, Scourin, and serve. And here's Tommy Byrne, who struck out his last time up. Tommy's a good woodsman, bats from the left side. The Yankees have Byrne up there now with Rizzuto on deck, and the pitch is a curveball. Outside corner, strike one. The Dodgers have Duke Snyder around in right center field. Deep in right field is Carl Frillo. Ready as Padres deals a curveball. It's on the inside corner strike two. So Johnny Padres, who is 23 years old, working out there as if he had ice water running through his veins, and he's pitching to another veteran who has pitched outstanding ball not only in this game but in his other performance. And the two-strike pitch is a curveball outside, taken by Tommy Byrne, one and two. Squirts out of Roy Campanella's mitt, and Tommy Byrne picks it up, takes a look quickly, and hands it off to Campy. Frankie Crosetti coaching down at third for the Yankees. Bill Dickey at first, the outfield around the right. Shallow and left protecting with his left-hand batter up is Junior Gilliam. And the pitch is a curve strike. And for the second time, Tommy Byrne is called out on strikes. And that is strikeout number three for young Johnny Padres. So... The Yankees have two men out, and their leadoff batter, Phil Rizzuto, steps in. In his other appearance against Johnny Padres, Rizzuto, in the other game, had one hit and two times at bat, and he is playing in his 52nd World Series game. The little guy is a right-hand batter. Padres comes in there with a fastball, a ground ball on the left side. Waiting for it is Hokey lets Rizzuto run. He pumps his throw over. He's got him. So in the fifth inning, the Yankees go down one, two, three order. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. And at the end of five full innings of play, the score, Brooklyn one and New York Yankees nothing. If during the course of the remainder of the ball game, I occasionally sound like Henry Aldrich, I hope you will bear with me because uh, somewhere along the line, we have picked up one of those dandy New York calls. No runs, four hits and no errors for the Yankees, and one run, two hits and no errors for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And leading off for Brooklyn in the top of the sixth inning will be the captain of the Dodgers, Pee Wee Reese. He has no hits and two times of bat today. In his last time against Tommy Byrne, he had two for four. And in the series prior to today, in 23 times of bat, had seven hits. So Pee Wee, a right-hand batter, steps in. Tommy Byrne, the left-hander, looking into Yogi Berra. And the outfield has Bob serve a few steps over in right center. Deep in right field is Hank Bauer. And around and left is Elston Howard. But the right side of the infield playing back. McDougal comes in two steps at third. And the pitch by Byrne is a curveball strike. Byrne and Padres have been almost automatic coming in with that ball. 
They both know where that plate is, and they both have been hitting it. Here's the pitch, and it's a liner out over his head, out over the left center field, going over his serve. And he's got the ball, and making the turn at first and holding on is Pee Wee Reese. And he's on with a single. So the Dodgers have come up with their third hit off Tommy Burns. And for the first time in today's ball game, they have the leadoff batter on. And in there now is Duke Snyder, playing despite a trick knee, one that he injured yesterday. And the Yankee outfield pulls to the right with Hank Barr going back near the right field wall. Bob Sir pulling around in right center. Billy Martin is deep at second. Rizzuto is shaded over towards second. And McDougal is in close at third. Here's the pitch to Snyder. Shortens up, takes a curve outside. Ball one. The Duker apparently showing signs of dropping a bunt, moving Pee Wee Reese down to second with the Dodgers leading one to nothing. And time a-wasting in this, the seventh and the game of the World Series. Because all else now only contributes, and this is the one that decides who's the champion. Reese leads away from first, and Byrne didn't like it and steps off. And so Reese goes back. Scourin holding against the runner at first. There's Reese jumping off to swing. It's a take and a strike. Duke looked as if he was going to not bunt, take a swing. He took the pitch, a curve, snapped over that inside corner. It's one ball, one strike. Billy Herman coaching down at third, relaying the signs from manager Walt Alston. At first base is Jake Pittler. And Pee Wee Reese holding close at first as Byrne looks over. The Duke is at bat. And Byrne again takes his foot off as he thinks Reese may be going. And Pee Wee goes back. All right, Reese leads away. Here's the pitch coming to Snyder. He drops the bunt along the third baseline. In his burn, makes it through to first. And the tag, and the ball is dropped by Scourin. As Duke Snyder went by first base, he bumped the arm of Bill Scourin, and the ball was dropped, and all hands are safe. was a beauty about 10 feet away from the plate. It's an error charged to Bell Scourin. And in quickly to field the ball is Tommy Byrne. No chance to get Reese. He made his throw to first. Scourin, who had moved in also for the bunt, trying to hustle back. And as Snyder went by him, he made the tag, but the ball was bumped out of his hands, and all hands are safe. And Bob Grimm, a right-hander, goes to work in the Yankee bullpen. So there's a conference out there on the Yankee mound. Tommy Byrne, Yogi Berra, Gil McDougal, and Roy Campanella standing back at the plate is, uh, well, waiting to see what the boys are going to do. Cappy knows how Scourin feels because uh, in an earlier game, Scourin came plowing into the plate, Cappy had him out, and then tagging him while the ball got knocked out of his hand. Snyder got credit for a sacrifice, and there's an error charged to Bill Scourin. Reese on second. Snyder on first. Nobody out. Roy Campanella with the batter. Byrne is ready. Delivers a curve outside. Ball one. Happy taking that pitch. Phil Rizzuto cutting back to second. Reese getting back safely. The outfield straight away. The Dodgers won. The Yankees nothing. We are in the top half of the sixth inning. On deck is Carl Frillo. Roy Campanella, right-hand batter with an open stance, his left foot pointed down that third baseline. Gil McDougal moves in two steps off the edge of the infield grass. Burns ready. The pitch is punted. And there is Burn coming in. Makes the throw to first. And the throw is taken by Martin. And out at first, the sacrifice is good. So Campy sacrifices the runners over. The play goes one to four. While we wait for Carl Frillo, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. The manager of the Yankees, Casey Stengel, is coming out to have a chat with his pitcher and his catcher. Tommy Byrne uh, standing there. 
And old Case digging around in that mound. The Dodgers going to a very uh, interesting weapon, the bunt. And, of course, with the error, it enabled the Dodgers to keep two men on. And then Campanella with a good bunt sacrifices two men over. He's got Reese on third. He's got Snyder on at second. And Casey Stengel is going to go with his pitcher. He's going to leave Tommy Byrne in there with Carl Frillo, right-hand batter, coming up. Carl Frillo, in the first game that Byrne pitched, was 0 for 3. They're going to put Carl Frillo on and pitch to Gil Hodges. So there is ball one. And the next one is ball two. And the third one is ball three way outside. And Yogi Berra has to quicken up the step to get outside to grab it. So Reese is on at third. Snyder is on at second. And with one more pitch, Carl Fellow will be at first. And there he goes. So that is the third walk. Charge to Tommy Byrne. The Yankees have committed their second error of the series. And the bases are loaded. One out. We are in the top of the sixth inning. The Dodgers lead one to nothing. And here is Gil Hodges, who prior to today had six hits in 22 times at bat. Against Byrne in his previous game, he was hitless in three times at bat. Today he's walked a single, so he's one for one. He drove in the first Dodger and the only Dodger run. And here comes Casey Stengel back out in a slow trot as Gil McDougal moves out to the mound. The wind is blowing from right to left field. And Casey Stengel is going to make a change. So Tommy Byrne will not get to pitch to Gil Hodges. Byrne has worked five and one-third innings. So far has been charged with one run and three hits and he had two strikeouts and he walked three and if the runners on base, Reese, Snyder or Frillo should score, they will be charged to Tommy Byrne. So Casey Stengel digs deep into the bullpen and making that long walk out is Bob Grimm. Grimm uh, has been in two games. He has worked seven innings, given up seven hits, uh, four runs, four bases on balls, seven strikeouts. He was charged with one loss, and his earned run average was 5.14. Hodges, who will face Grimm, singled twice, struck out once against Bob Grimm in game number five. So Gil Hodges grouped around with the bat boy for the Dodgers and a couple of his teammates discusses how he thinks he's going to hit against Bob Grimm. And the Dodgers have a chance here to bust loose. And Casey Stengel out there talking to Tommy Byrne. Byrne motioning to Bob Grimm that there's runners on third, second, and first. P.V. Reese had come in to have a chat with the next batter, Gil Hodges. Listen to the hand that Tommy Byrne gets as he leaves. goes Tommy Byrne. And now we have Gil Hodges standing alongside, waiting as Bob Grimm takes his warm-ups. Sun shining brightly, and the shadows now have reached out to the mound, and they are halfway between first and second, and they have right field over to right center field shouted out. The Dodgers have yet to win a game in this, the 1955 World Series in Yankee Stadium. And the Yankees, of course, with three victories, along with the Dodger three victories, are fighting for this one because this one decides who wears the crown. Barra says he's all set to go. And Grimm says he's ready to go, and stepping in is Gil Hodges. (laughs) 
Gill wearing number 14, right hand batter. Bob Grimm looking in now with three men on. One man out, top of the sixth inning. The Dodgers won, the Yankees nothing. He's ready, and his windup in the first pitch is a fastball, strike one call. Grimm goes back to get a little rosin. Looks into Yogi Berra. He's ready to work, and here she comes, and it's a curve that breaks outside. One and one. One ball and one strike. And the Dodgers have the bases loaded. Reese on at third. Snyder's on at second. Frillo's on at first. And Grimm, who has inherited a problem, passed over by Tommy Byrne. Starts into his windup. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Is a curveball hit out in the right center field going over as Bob serves. Still going over. And he reaches up. He makes a catch. And here comes Pee Wee Reese. The throw is into second base. And Snyder goes to third. And the Dodgers lead 2 to nothing. As Hodges, with a sacrifice fly, into right center field, drives in the second run for Brooklyn. And we have two out. And the batter now is Don Hope. So that run is charged to Tommy Byrne. Hoke is hitless in two times a bat against Tommy Byrne. Facing Bob Grimm for his first time right-hand batter. Bent at the knees. Stands about halfway deep in the batter's box. Grimm looks over to first. Looks over to third base to see that Duke Snyder's not moving around too much. He's ready. And spins a fastball that swung on a miss. One strike. Serve moves over into right center field. About five or six steps. Gail McDougal playing about five steps off the line. Moves in one step now. As Grimm gets ready and deals a fastball that's dropped by Yogi Barra. Can't find it. It's out in front of him. And going out a second is Polo and he's in there. The ball bounced in the dirt and bounced away from Yogi Barra. And Yogi was looking for it and is charged as a wild pitch. So the Dodgers have two men in scoring position with two out in the sixth inning, and they're leading two to nothing. Duke Snyder on at third. Carl Pillow's on at second. And Bob Grimm is pitching to Don Hope. There's two out. Oak digs in with his right foot. One ball, one strike. Grimm looks into Yogi Berra. Into his windup in the 1-1 delivery. It's a fastball inside. Almost got away from Berra. Two balls, one strike. Don Hoke moved back quickly and out of there. Because that fastball was coming right at him. And Grimm was shouting to look out as the ball slipped out of his hand. So it's two and one with two out, two on. The Dodgers lead two to nothing. And we are in the top of the sixth. Grimm pitching very carefully to Hope. Looks in, is ready. And the 2-1 delivery is a fastball inside. Ball three. So it's... Three balls and one strike. The Brooklyn Dodgers leading in the ball game two to nothing. And the outfield around the right as Bob Grimm looks to third. But Duke Snyder leading away and the pitch is on its way. A fastball. Ball four. Shuba is coming up now to bat for Don Zimmer. 
is the left-hand batter. During the regular season, he batted 274. And he stands up there, slightly open stance. The base is loaded. On third base is Duke Snyder. On second base is Carl Fullo. At first base is Don Hoke. And George Shuba batting for Don Zimmer. Left-hand batter in the first pitch by Grimm is a curveball. High and outside. Ball one. There is a look out to the Yankee bullpen. As Bob Grimm finds himself deeper in trouble than the one he inherited. Serve is around in right center field. Deep in right field is Hank Bauer. Runners lead away. The pitch is swung on a ground ball to the right side. Billy Martin moves over. It's taken by Scour and he scoops to Grimm. He steps on first. And that's all for the Dodgers. And the play goes 3-1. to one. So for Brooklyn, one run on one hit, one error, and three men were left on. And at the end of five and a half innings of play, the score, Brooklyn two and the Yankees nothing. Sandy Amaros is going out to play left field for the Dodgers. And coming in to play second base, Junior Gilliam. And the first man up is Billy Martin. And he has strike one. Martin has one hit and two times at bat. Now on the mound is Johnny Padros, and he deals a fastball outside. One ball, one strike. This is the last of the sixth inning. Martin uh, singled in the third, and he flied out to left field in the first. So he has one for two on the day. Had seven hits out of 22 times at bat. The outfield straight away, left side of the infield. Has Hope two steps off the edge of the grass. The pitch, a fastball. It's inside. So we have made a correction on the count. And Billy Martin stands in there with a three-ball count. The next pitch is a outside curveball, ball four. And the Yankees get the first man up on. That is walk number two given up by Johnny Padres. And manager Walt Alston makes the walk out from the Dodger dugout to the mound. And out in the bullpen for the Dodgers is Clem Labine and Don Besson. Walt Alston standing there patiently talking and Pee Wee Reese starts to come out. Padres has given up only four hits. He has walked only two men. He has struck out three. But the Dodgers are leading two to nothing. And with manager Walt Alston having a bullpen full of pitchers, he wants to take no chance because the season is going to end today. And there's no point in saving pitchers for tomorrow. Because there won't be anybody here tomorrow. Gil McDougal is in there now. He struck out. In the third inning, he's single, but the ground ball that he hit, hit Phil Rizzuto, who was moving into third. Martin on at first. The pitch to McDougal shortens up, takes a fastball strike. The outfield for the Dodgers straight away. And here's the pitch by Padres. A let-up curve that's punted along the third baseline. Padres coming over. Makes it throw to first. Too late. Martin with a beautiful bunt along the third baseline. He's in uh, at second with McDougal beating out his bunt and going to first. 
Martin, who walked, moves to second. McDougal beats out a bunt and is on at first, and the Yankees have two men on. And that is the fifth hit off Johnny Padres. So Gil McDougal today has two hits and three times at bat. And here is Yogi Berra. Yogi with a double in two times up. Hit a fly ball in center field in the fourth inning. And when Duke Snyder and Junior Gilliam got their signals crossed, it dropped in there for a double. He flied out to center field in the second inning. And Pee Wee Reese comes in to talk to his pitcher, Johnny Padres. Talk about excitement? Well, we got it here today because this is the big game of the World Series. This is the one who decides which team is going to be the world champion. Billy Martin strolls away from second. On at first is Gil McDougal. Right side of the infield is back. Gil Hodge is moving in looking for a bunt. And here's a pitch to Barra. The curveball outside. Ball one. Yogi Barra following the course of that ball very carefully. Looks down to Frankie Corsetti coaching at third. The outfield's around the right. Duke Snyder in right center. Carl Fullo deep in right field. Hodges playing even with first and playing in front of the runner. The pitch is swung on. A fly ball hit in the left field. Julia Gilliam was pulled around, going hard, heading way over near the foul line. He reaches up and he's got the ball. And a throw to first. And they have Gil McDougal double. So Yogi Berra hit a fly ball in the corner in left field. And Sandy Amaris, who had taken over for Junior Gilliam, came pounding over right near the line, grabbed the ball, and fired it back to first. And the relay was in time to get Gil McDougal at first base. The relay man was Pee Wee Reese. So it goes 7-6-3. And there's two out, and Billy Martin's on at second, and the Dodgers are protecting their two-run lead. The batter's Hank Bauer. Ready to work is Johnny Padres. A curveball delivered inside for ball one. Great defensive play by Sandy Amaris, who defied all odds by making the catch and then alertly pumping that ball into Reese, who fired it over to first base. The double off Gil McDougal. Here's the one ball pitch to Bauer. Swing and a roller foul. Johnny Padres, the 23-year-old left-hander for the Dodgers, who got the Dodgers off a losing streak after they lost the first two games to the Yankees. Working here today for the Brooklyn Dodgers and trying to serve up to manager Walt Alston. The first World Series victory for the Brooklyn team. The outfield straight away. Billy Martin leads away from second. The 1-1 pitch is swing and a miss. And it's 1-2. and two. Sandy Amaros in left field. Duke Snyder is in center. And Carl Frillo is in right field. Junior Gilliam has replaced Don Zimmer at second base. Johnny Padres digs around a little bit on the mound to make sure that it's all smoothed out where he comes down with that foot. The Dodgers have two runs off three hits, no errors. The Yankees, no runs, five hits, one error. Here's the one-two pitch to Bauer. Let up curve. Fouls it back. And the count remains unchanged. One and two. I don't believe a right-handed outfielder could have made a catch of that ball that was hit by Yogi Berra. Sandy Amrose, using his left hand as an aid, reached right in the corner and just got his glove on it. So the wind continues to blow from right to left field, and the Dodger hearts are singing as they hold a 2 nothing lead. The 1-2 pitch to Bauer, fastball inside. So it's two balls, two strikes.
Johnny Padre is out there trying to pitch very carefully. He wants to get out of this jam if he can. Because Billy Martin is out there on second base. He's got two out. He's ready. The 2-2 pitch. Curveball. Swung on. Hit foul in the upper deck. Back of the Yankee dugout. And the new ball goes out to Padres, who takes the opportunity to take a little stroll back of that rubber. The outfield straight away for the Brooklyn Dodgers with Snyder in center, Amaros in left, and around in right is Carl Frillo. Ready now is the 2-2 pitch, and there's a ground ball. The shortstop, Reese, moves in for it, makes his throw, and it is in time for the out at first. Throw in the sixth inning for the New York Yankees. No runs, one hit. There were no errors by the Dodgers, and one man was left on. And so at the end of six full innings of play, the score... Brooklyn 2, New York Yankees nothing. My opponent is no good. My opponent can't even count. You're wrong. I'm right. Although we argue politics, on one thing we're agreed. Sports liquor, better looking shade. Kitchen at super speed. My friend, you change blade. One, two, three. And fast, slick shaves you get. Plus double-edged economy. The people's choice to let to look sharp. When you face the world to feel sharp. On the fall indeed, just be sharp. Give your whiskers up with the modern Gillette Super Speed. We go into the Brooklyn half of the seventh inning now. With the Brooklyn Dodgers leading by a score of two to nothing. The Dodgers have two runs from three hits, and they've committed no errors. The Yankees have no runs, five hits, and they have booted one. Johnny Padra's getting a big hand as he comes up there. This young fellow has uh, certainly exhibited great courage. For in the sixth inning, he had given up a walk to Martin. He'd given up a bunt single to McDougal. And then some alert defensive play by the Dodgers got him out of the jam. He's hitless in two times at bat. Bob Grimm on the mound for the Yankees into his windup. Delivers, swung on, ground ball to the right side, one hop, Billy Martin's got it. He lets Padres run and has his throw over in time. And there was no question about Martin. It was just a question of when he would throw the ball. <coughs> one out, and the batter is Junior Gilliam. Junior is hitless in two times at bat. He walked in the third inning. He bounced out second to first in the fifth, and he bounced out short to first in the first inning. Gilliam uh, went into today's game batting 300 in the series, had six hits in 20 times at bat. And uh, against Tommy Byrne, the last time Byrne pitched, he had one for four. But Bob Grimm is in there now for the Yankees. He came on in the sixth inning, and he delivers to Gilliam. Swung on, a drive deep in the right field. Coming on is Hank Bauer. He traps the ball. It's in there for a base hit. Up now is the Dodger captain, Pee Wee Reese. He has one hit and three times at bat. The Dodgers have a runner on it first, and they have one out. And this is the top of the seventh inning. And the Dodgers are leading two to nothing. Yogi Berra goes out to have a chat with Bob Grimm. They have had their meeting, and now Yogi comes back. Reese singled in the sixth inning. He lined out to center field in the third, and he flied out to center in the first. So he has one hit and three times a bat. Grimm checks the runner at first base, Junior Gilliam. He is ready, and his pitch is on the way. And there goes Gilliam, and the throw is down to second. Moving over is Rizzuto. The tag is made. He's out. So the play goes two to six. As Junior Gilliam tries to steal a base on Yogi Berra. While we wait for the next pitch to come on up to Pee Wee Reese, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. 
Dewey Reese is back in there. Fastball, and down he goes as it moved uh, in very close to his head. One ball and one strike with two out. And the Dodgers uh, lose their runner as Yogi Berra, with a good throw down to Phil Rizzuto, who had moved over to cover second, is in time to get Gilliam trying to move in there. Here's the 1-1 delivery, a fast ball. It's a little high. Two balls, one strike. Two and one. Reese has been a great defensive ability for the Brooklyn Dodgers in the series, and with his bat, he has also helped the cause. Has had seven hits and 23 times a bat part of the day. Fastball strike. Two balls, two strikes. Pee Wee steps out to get a little dirt. And Bob Grimm does a little work on that baseball with those big, strong hands of his. Bob serve, moves over in right center field a few steps, and around in right is Hank Bauer. And in left field is Elston Howard. The pitch is a swing and a miss, strike three. Oh, Bob Grimm gets a hold of the Dodger captain, strikes him out. And in the seventh inning for the Brooklyn Dodgers, no runs, one hit. No errors and nobody left on. At the end of six and a half innings of play, the score, Brooklyn two, the New York Yankees nothing. In the seventh inning for the New York Yankees, it will be Bill Scourin, Bob Serve, and Elston Howard. Or if Casey Stengel uh, decides to make a change, the fans start scooting out from the left field wall out in the direction of center field. He's holding up a program, and apparently he wants the Duke to autograph it for him. And the Duke has got his hand up on his chin. He's probably saying to him, my friend, you are going to probably get one of the quickest exits that's ever been provided in Yankee Stadium. Umpire Bill Summer out there. So a great rooter of Duke Snyder's pays the supreme penalty for going out on the playing field. Eviction. 62,465 are on hand here today to watch this game. And they're seeing a pip because the Brooklyn Dodgers are leading two to nothing. They have been able to get only four hits off the pitching of Tommy Byrne and Bob Grimm. The Yankees have been able to get five hits off Johnny Padres, but they have not been able to knock him off that mound. So Padres uh, waits patiently as the men in blue dispose of the fan who rushed out on the field, the outfield straight away. Johnny Padres, the left hander, is about ready to work. Bill Scowlin's in there, first pitch, fastball, high outside, ball one. Scowlin has one hit and two times a bat. He doubled in the second inning. Padres ready, the pitch, fastball on the outside corner for a strike, one and one. One ball and one strike. Bill Scourn, the strong man of the New York Yankees, wearing number 14, standing deep in their right-hand batter's box. The outfield straight away for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Padres ready to work, and here's the 1-1 pitch. Is a swing and a ground ball to the left side, coming in his Reese. He's got a hurry, gets his throw over, he's got him. There's one out as Pee Wee Reese comes in quickly, scoops that ball up, and Scourn can move down that line. He used to bust those lines playing football, and he knows that you have to puddle your feet to get down at the first base ahead of that throw. And Reese, who had to come in for that slow roller, fired that ball over there like a rocket. Bob Serve, the big strong man, swings from a close stance, swings on the first pitch, fouls it back up on top into the stance for Suvenir. That was not the fastball of Padres. That was one of fine jet aircraft of the United States Air Force. Here's the pitch to let up curve. A ground ball left side. Reese in. Takes it on the off hop. Gets the fire over there and it's in time for the out. So Pee Wee was really pouring the coal to the boiler as he pumped that ball over to pick off Bob Serve who can also scoot down that line. And Johnny Padres Comes in with that let-up pitch uh, just as if he's coming in with that fastball about three-quarters 
And uh, having the same delivery kind of fools them. Here's Elston Howard. Takes a fastball high. Ball one. Elston wearing number 32. Takes a look down to Frankie Crosetti coaching at third. This is the last half of the seventh inning. Two out. The Yankees trail. The Dodgers are leading two to nothing. The seventh game of the World Series. Into his windup. His Padres the left hand of the one ball pitch. Swing and a smash down the left side. Bye. Out into left field. It's a base hit. Elston Howard picks off the sixth hit off Johnny Padres. On a solid smash through the left side that Pee Wee Reese moved to his right for, dove for, but couldn't come up with. And Mickey Mantle is going to bat for Bob Grimm. Mickey Mantle, who has certainly been handicapped with muscle problems, has been in only two games. He's been at bat nine times. He has two hits, one home run, one RBI. He has struck out twice. His batting average in this, the 1955 World Series, is 222. Padres, uh, in the third game, which he pitched against the Yankees and which Mantle was in, uh, dished up a home run to Mantle. There's a swing and a foul coming back up on top of the deck. But that was the only uh, blow that Mickey got off Johnny Padres. And so Johnny now realizes that with the Dodgers holding a 2 to nothing lead, he's got his work cut out for him. Elston Howard jumps off to a lead at first, and the pitch is a let-up curve outside. One ball and one strike. Two out, last of the seventh. The Dodgers lead two to nothing. Mickey Mantle batting from the right side with a closed stand, standing deep in that right-hand batter's box. Has his right foot anchored right on that back line. Here's a pitch by Potters, a fastball. Swung on, popped up to the left side. Pee Reese moves back on the edge of the outfield grass. Still moving back. Pounds his glove, reaches, he's got it. So Mickey Mantle pops out to Pee Reese, the captain of the Dodgers. And for the Yankees in the seventh inning, no runs, one hit, no errors. And one Yankee left on base. And at the end of seven innings of play, the score, Brooklyn 2, New York Yankees nothing. We are going to have a new pitcher for the Yankees, and it looks like Bob Turley. Oh, we had Tommy Burns starting. And he lasted five and one-third innings. And Tommy gave up both runs. Bob Grimm, who uh, came on in the sixth, worked uh, one and two-third innings. And he gave up no runs. He, however, was nicked for one hit. And he uh, did not get into too much trouble. He had one strikeout. And it was a big one for him. Pee Wee Reese. So Bob Turley, who throws those bullets, comes on. And Al Helper here has compiled the total attendance for the series for us. 362,310 of the finest baseball fans or representative of the finest baseball fans in the world have jammed their way here into Yankee Stadium in Ebbets Field. And they have seen a dandy. And millions of people all over the world have listened to and watched the World Series as another wonderful gesture of the great folks of the Gillette Safety Razor Company of Boston. Well, here's Duke Snyder stepping in in the eighth inning for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Left-hand batter, Bob Turley, the bullet thrower, up there on the mound for the New York Yankees. And Turley looks into Yogi Barra. The outfield's around the right and deep. Right side of the infield's deep. Turley comes in with a fastball that swung on, popped up, coming back out of play. Foul. Turley looking into Yogi Barra as Duke Snyder. Keeps flexing that bat. The Duke could probably like to wind this thing up with one big blast. He takes a curve that's in there for a strike. 
Strike two now to Duke Snyder wearing number four. And the Dodgers leading two to nothing. This is the seventh game. The final game. This is it. The World Series will be decided here in the shadows of Yankee Stadium. Charlie delivers with a two-strike pitch, and it's strike three call. Boy, that was a fast ball. It popped on that outside corner. Broke away from this left-hand batter. And Bob Turley, who made a start and had a little unhappiness in not getting by the Brooklyn Dodgers, is out there on the mound in relief. And the Yankees still hopeful with the Dodgers only leading by two runs. The batter is Roy Campanella. He has one hit in two official times at bat. Sacrificed his last time. Fastball, swing and a miss. And he really missed that one. And Turley, who is pitching out of those shadows, and with the light background with the folks out in center field, seated out in the warm sunshine, gets a fastball inside, and backing away is Roy Campanella. Just sitting up here and watching that fastball come in from Turley, I doubt whether I would want to bat against Turley if I could sit back here in the radio coop and use a bat about 60 feet long. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball swung on, a fly ball hit into short left field. Elson Howard with his glasses down, trotting in, pounds his glove, and he makes a catch. Throws two out in the eighth inning for the Dodgers, and Carl Frollo is stepping up. Carl was uh, passed intentionally in the sixth inning. He bounced out short to first in the fourth, and he flied to left field in the second. So he's 0 for 2 today. He has had eight hits in 24 times at bat prior to today, so he's 8 for 26 with two official charges uh, for plate duty here in today's game. <clears throat> Bob Serve moves around in right center field. Charlie comes in with that fastball inside for ball one. There's a big hole open in left center. Around in right is Hank Bauer. They're figuring that no one, and I mean no one, will be able to get around on Turley's fastball. He's ready, and he deals another fastball. It swung on, hit into center field. And Serve, who was around in right center, just moves in three steps and takes it. And in the top of the eighth inning for the Brooklyn Dodgers, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. At the end of seven and a half innings to play the score, Brooklyn two, and the Yankees nothing. This is Westbrook Ben Boris with news from Papermate of a significant advance in the science of writing. In my years of news reporting, I've had many a pen stop writing just when I needed it the most. You've probably had the same trouble. Chances are, you weren't out of ink. The ink was simply clogged. Ink clogging, you see, is the major reason most ball pens stop writing. After years of research, Papermate has discovered an exclusive new ink formula with an amazing additive called Clojum that ends ink clogging. Because of its remarkable lubricating and anti-clogging properties, Papermate's new ink formula with Clojum writes all the time, every time. Even on hard-to-write surfaces such as checks, glossy photos, even glass. Get a Papermate. The only pen that has the exclusive new ink formula with amazing Clojum. The Papermate piggyback Capri is still just $1.95. Bill Rizzuto leads off, and he takes a fastball. Strike one. The scooter is hitless in two times a bat. He walked in the third. Johnny Padres ready. Deals a one-strike pitch, a fly ball. Hit over near the wall in left field. Going on to Sandy Amherst. It is in the crowd. Well, Sandy made uh, one fantastic grab in the sixth inning of a fly ball hit out there by Yogi Barra, and he turned it into a double play. But this time, he would have had to walk on the heads of about 30 people to even get out there after the ball. Rizzuto wearing number 10, pumps that bat. Padres comes in with a fastball high. One ball, two strikes. There's a swing and a foul on the screening, and a stop. And it bounces back downstairs. So the count is one and two. And the Yankees are trailing by two runs. And the Dodgers are holding a two to nothing lead. The Dodgers have four hits 
They have played airless ball. The Yankees have six hits. They booted one. The one-two pitch is outside for ball two. <laughs> Johnny Padres looks around, see that all of his mates are in their respective positions, and they are. Now he is ready, and the 2-2 pitch to Rizzuto is swung on. Line drive to left center field, going over Sandy Evers. And he moves under, he grabs the ball, he fires it in the second, and Rizzuto slips and falls, but gets back to first base. In Phil Rizzolo, Billy Martin, the batter. Billy has one hit and two times a bad right-hand batter. Johnny Padres has given up seven hits. He's ready. Swing and a miss. Strike one. This is the last of the eighth inning. The Dodger bullpen is active with a right-hander working out there. Zudo leads away. The pitch to Martin. A swing and a slasher going on the right field. Coming hard is Cal Frillo. He's got it. And he does not make a throw, but he runs the ball in. Carl Frillo coming from deep right field as Billy Martin tried to hit the right and uh, allow little Phil Rizzuto to scoot all the way around the second to third if he could. But Frillo makes a good grab. Took it bell high and hung on to it. So there's one out in the Yankee half of the eighth inning. Scores Brooklyn 2, New York nothing. And the Yankees are now fighting with their backs to the wall as the Dodgers hold a two-run lead. And here's the pitch and a curveball inside for ball one to Gil McDougal. McDougal has two hits in three times at bat. Beat out a bunt. Hit a ground ball down the third baseline that hit Phil Rizzuto. And was called out in strikes. Padres checks Rizzuto, delivers. Fastball, it's low outside. Ball two, two or nothing. <laughs> the outfield for the Dodgers straight away. Duke Snyder moves back. A few steps. Sandy Ambrose around and left. Padres looks to Rizzuto at first. The pitch, fastball, strike call. Johnny Padres, who has one World Series victory this year to his credit, looks in to Roy Campanella. Two balls, one strike to count to McDougal. He comes with a curve that's outside, ball three. Johnny uh, Padres pitched in 1953 in the fifth game of the World Series. Lost 11 to 7, and in the third game of this series, won 8 to 3. This is his first series appearance at Yankee Stadium. Here's a 3 1 pitch to McDougal, strike two call. So Gil McDougal, who had started to take a short walk down the first baseline, suddenly comes back, and the count is full. And it will be interesting to see what Scooter Rizzuto, who's on at first, will do. With one out, whether he will play it cautious or whether he'll be off and running. Campanella with a great throwing arm. Rizzuto leads away. Here's a pitch. There he goes. Swing a ground ball left side. Bounces off Oak Stoner. It's going on the left field. It's a base hit. Here's Rizzuto going to third. McDougal gets credit for a base hit. That ball took a bad hop. Hit Don Hoke in the shoulder. Bounced over his shoulder into short left field. And the Yankees have the tying runs on bases. With one out. 
And Yogi Berra, scheduled to come up. Walt Alston, the manager of the Dodgers, has come out. And he's out there on the mound talking to his pitcher, Johnny Padres, to his catcher, Roy Campanella, and to his captain and shortstop, Pee Wee Reese. That is the eighth hit off Johnny Padres. The score is Brooklyn 2 and the New York Yankees nothing. Manager Walt Alston uh, now departs and apparently is going to leave Padres in there. that was very quiet a few moments ago is really starting to whip it up now. Yogi Berra, the left-hand batter, is in there. He has one hit and three times bat. First pitch, he takes a swing and he pops it out into right center field. Duke Snyder coming on. Carl Frollo moving in. Frollo moving in and he's got it. And here's uh, Rizzuto breaking for the plate that throws in. And he goes back to third. Two out for the uh, New York Yankees with two men on. We're in the last half of the eighth inning. Here's Hank Bauer. Takes a fastball. It's low and inside for ball one. Bauer wearing number nine. Knocks the dirt out of his spikes. He is hitless in three times a bat. Bounced out second to first. Short to first and flat out to right field. He swings over a close stance. Johnny Padres on the mound for the Dodgers. Checks his runners. Delivers a curve. That's over for a strike. Johnny heaves a big sigh, goes back down off the mound, back near the edge of the grass, picks up a little rosin. Regardless of who wins this game, you must salute Johnny Padres and his great heart, courage that he's had to come in with a soft curve. Delivers a fastball, swung on, foul back. So it's one and two as Johnny Padres pitching his heart out for his Brooklyn Dodgers and trying to help his team win their first World Series engagement who have gone up against the Yankees before and have never come off with the honors and trying desperately here after coming back after losing the first two games to win three in a row and having the Yankees here yesterday tie it up. The Dodgers lead two to nothing. The Yankees have two on. The one-two pitch to Bauer. Fastball outside, two and two. It looked like Johnny Padres had a little slider on the end of that pitch. But it didn't slide quite enough. Started outside of this right-hand batter. Started to come in, but didn't quite catch enough. And it's two and two. Now field straight away. Rizzuto at third. McDougal at first. The pitch to Bauer. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. No runs for the Yankees. Two hits. No and no errors. And two men were left on. And Johnny Padres could run for... Mayor of Brooklyn, and I think almost mayor of the area around Yankee Stadium, and be elected unanimously. So at the end of the eighth inning, the score is Brooklyn two and the New York Yankees nothing. Has proven not only to the baseball fans all over the world who are listening today and watching the game, but to the fans here assembled that he has all of the courage and all of the desire that is needed by a young man to be a successful pitcher. And while the ball game is not over, he has proved himself to have brilliance in moments of uh, tightness. While we wait for the top of the ninth inning to open up, let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is WGN Radio, your exclusive World Series station in Chicago. This is Bob Neal with Al Helfer, and we move into the top of the ninth inning. And for the Brooklyn Dodgers, leading off will be the first baseman, Gil Hodges, who swings and pops one up, foul. And moving over is Bill Scour, and he has plenty of room, and he has it for the first out in the ninth inning. Gil Hodges, going after a fastball, in on his hands, pops it up to the right side. That's grabbed up by Bill Scour, and there's one out. So the Dodgers holding on to their two-run lead. They picked up a run in the fourth inning and one in the sixth inning. 
Fourth inning on a double by Campanella and a single by Gil Hodges. Here's a fastball by Turley on the outside corner for a strike. And you can watch that ball and it jumps today. Bob served the center fielder for the Yankees a few steps over in right center. Around and right is Hank Bauer. Pitch by Turley. Fastball. Foul back. And it's two strikes. Don Hoke is the batter. He's hit less than two times a bat, playing in place of an injured Jackie Robinson. And you could feel a kind of, well, sadness on the Dodger bench when it was announced that Jackie wouldn't play today. But Hoke has been strong. He swings and fouls off Yogi Barra's mitt, and it's out along the right side, but it's foul. And the bat boy for the Yankees sprints out to pick it up. So it's two strikes, and the batter's Don Hoke wearing number 43, and the Dodgers are coming up here in the ninth inning. They are leading two to nothing. They have only half the hits that the Yankees have, but they have two runs and the Yankees have an inning. Ready to work now is Bob Turley, and he delivers a curveball that's inside for ball one. That ball just hung inside, just a trace, enough to be a ball. Umpire Jim Hanachik working carefully behind the plate today. Turley's into his windup and the one-two pitch to Hoke. Fastball swung on, foul off the facing upstairs, bounces upstairs. A warm autumn afternoon in Yankee Stadium as the two clubs who come from respective boroughs in this great big city are battling it out Turley with a double wind up now is ready and deals that fastball it swung on lined out into right center field for a base hit Hulk breaking the turn at first starts to go for second and serve fires a strike into Billy Martin's second base well here's Sandy Amaros He's coming up for his first time in this game. He came on after Manager Wall Alston had substituted Shuba for Zimmer. And he made quite a catch. Left-hand batter, bent at the waist, bent at the knees, and a fastball pops just inside and high for ball one. I have never seen Turley's fastball jump as much as it is jumping today. It is not only popping up and breaking down, but it's popping laterally to the left and to the right. Hoke leads away. Turley checks him, throws to first, back safely. The Dodgers, two runs, five hits, no errors. The Yankees, no runs, eight hits, and one error. The Dodgers batting in the top of the ninth. They have one man on, one man out. Turley again looks over to first. Scowron holding against the runner. Hoke with a three-step lead. The pitch is inside. Almost gets away from Yogi Barra. But Yogi recovers and makes his throw back out to the pitcher. So the count is two balls to Amaris, who looks down to Billy Herman coaching at third. Sandy, in four games, has been up 12 times, has four hits. He's driven in three runs, and he has had one home run. Turley looks to first base. Hope edges away. The pitch is a fastball high and outside. Ball three. So, bullet Bob Turley, who was bothered by wildness during the regular American League season, flexes that right arm, goes back, looks back at the dirt in Yankee Stadium, and looks out to the bullpen as he notices that one of his teammates gets up. There's a 3 nothing pitch to Amber. It's a ball. It breaks over that inside corner, a fastball, and it's a strike. Three and one. Turley wearing number 19. Looking out, there is activity in the Yankee bullpen. Turley is the third pitcher to be used by the Yanks. A fastball swung on and missed. Strike two. So the count is full. Three and two. And that Turley is making that baseball look about the size of the uh, end of a pin. There goes Hoke, and the pitch is inside, ball four, and Amherst walks. So the Dodgers have two men on, with one man out, 
And Gil McDougal moves over to have a chat with his pitcher, Bob Turley. And the hand is for Johnny Padres. Just listen to it. New York is famous for its receptions to famous people, to statesmen, to military men, to stars of the stage and screen. And they have shown just as much desire to honor this young man who has pitched valiantly here so far. Swings on the first pitch, hits a fly ball to center field, serve moving on in. Elston Howard moving in, and Howard watches as serve makes the catch and throws to Rizzuto. So Padres' first ball hitting... Pops a little fly ball in center field. And we have two out, two on. And the leadoff batter for the Brooklyn Dodgers, Junior Gilliam, who has one hit in three times at bat, is up. Junior will bat from the left side against the fastballer, Bob Turley. And the outfield will shade around a little bit. Let's serve over in right center. Deep in right field is Hank Bauer. Right side of the infield is deep, and McDougal is in close at third. Charlie checks his runner, delivers a fastball that's high. Ball one. There is almost an anticlimactic feeling now in the ball game. As the fans here remember the eighth inning when the Yankees were threatening to bust the door in. Inside for ball two. Now uh, when they had two men on and one out that young Johnny Padres disposed of Yogi Barra, ever a dangerous hitter, and struck out Hank Bauer. On at second is Don Hulk, and on at first is Sandy Amaris. And the Dodgers have two out in the top of the ninth inning, and Junior Gilliam waits with a two-ball count. Turley checks his runners. Here's the pitch. A fastball strike. <laughs> Manager Walt Alston very nervously pacing inside of his dugout. Jackie Robinson sitting up on the top step. And the Dodgers are all up along the line. Watching carefully. This will be a historical moment if the Dodgers can hang on. There's a swing by Gilliam. A long fly ball deep in the right field. Going back near the wall is Hank Bauer. He reaches up. He makes the catch. Fine catch by Hank Bauer, who went deep into right center field, near the wall, to pull that drive of Junior Gilliams out of the sky. And the Dodgers try to build up the lead here in the ninth inning, but without success. And in the top of the ninth, for Brooklyn, no runs, one hit. There were no errors. And the Dodgers left two men on base. They have left eight men on the bases so far. So at the end of eight and a half innings of play, the score, Brooklyn two, New York Yankees nothing. Only once in series history, as you know, has a team won the series after losing the first two games. The 1921 Giants defeating the Yankees five games to three. So, we come to the last half of the ninth inning. And leading off for New York will be Bill Scourn. He has one hit and three times a bat. Johnny Potter is a left-hander. is working out there. He's ready to pitch in the first pitch to Scourn. Takes low for ball one. The Dodgers have two runs, five hits, no errors. The Yankees, no runs, eight hits, one error. Padres ready. Deals a curveball on the inside corner for a strike. So the count is one ball and one strike. Scourin is batting. Bob serves on deck. Padres kicks and throws, and it's low for ball two. Two balls, one strike. This young fella has been working out there for a little better than two and a half hours. There's a curve that catches the inside corner, evens up the count two and two. That ball broke about four feet. So the count to Bill Scourin, two balls, two strikes. The outfield playing straight away for the Dodgers. Sandy Amaris in left, Duke Snyder in center. In right field is Carl Frillo. Don Hoke playing back at third, about five steps off the line. Reese, halfway between second and third. A swing and a ground ball right back. Padres grabs the ball and tosses underhanded. 
to the first baseman and apparently he had trouble digging the ball out of his glove. But he gets it over in time. Well, the Yankees are grouped around Casey Stengel down there in the dugout as old Case is trying to make some kind of a switch here. You know, Casey's players have a lot of respect for him. Pitch to serve, a fastball, strike one. Bob Serve is hitless in three times at bat. The outfield straight away. Johnny Padres delivers an overhand fastball for a ball, one strike one. The Dodgers are two outs away from winning the World Series in 1955. But standing between them and that fact are two big right-hand batters at the moment. Bob Serve out there, waits, and the 1-1 delivery is a fastball strike two. And young Padres seems to be throwing just as hard now as he was in the first inning. Roy Campanella, the steadying influence, working back of the plate. Here's the one-two pitch. Serve swings, and he pops it up. Out into short left field. Going out is Reese. Coming on is Amaris. And Amaris will make the catch. There's two out in the ninth inning. The Dodgers lead two to nothing. Elston Howard's coming up. If you're a died on the wool rooter or just a casual fan, you'll enjoy the keen sighted analysis of today's game by Bill Corum, one of America's most popular sports authorities. Here's the pitch to Elston Howard. Strike one call. So you stay tuned for Bill, because he'll be on here after the game. One strike to Elston Howard, a right-hand batter. Johnny Padres on the mound for the Dodgers. Ready, delivers a curve that's just a little outside for 1-1 count. The fans are standing up because the all of the excitement, all of the great pitching, all of the power, all of the defensive ability is tied in now, and all attention is focused on this youngster with the left arm who deals and swings and misses with a 1-2. and two. So Johnny Padres now has a one ball, two strike count on Elston Howard. And we have two out in the last half of the ninth inning. And the Brooklyn Dodgers are leading two to nothing. The Yankees are playing in Yankee Stadium. And the Dodgers are leading two to nothing. That in itself is historical. Padres now with a double windup. The one two pitch Howard takes high. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. And, you know, you really have to pay a compliment to the umpires, men who must make decisions quickly and who are watching carefully every pitch. Two balls, two strikes, with two out. And Johnny Padres nods his head to Roy Campanella. He's into a double windup, the outfield straight away. Triple windup, and Elston Howard decides to step out and does. Now, umpire Jim Honachick moves back of the plate. He motions to Johnny Padres. It's all right. Johnny Padres heaves a great big sigh. He looks in now. He starts the pump, and the 2-2 pitch is swung on and foul back, and it's 2-2. Two and two. two balls, two strikes. Yankee Stadium, a uh, scene of many historic battles at all sports events, is being thrilled here at the moment. Here's the 2-2 delivery, a swing and a foul, and it goes into the upper deck. So the mantle of greatness, which is being held by only fate alone, waiting for Johnny Padres to step in and have it hoisted on his shoulders, and he very casually pulls his socks up. Now he looks into Roy Campanella. Nobody on, two out. The Dodgers leading two to nothing. It's the last half of the ninth inning. Johnny Padres into his windup in the 2-2 pitch. A let-up curve, a ground ball to the left side. Pee Wee Reese has it. The throw to first, and he's out. 
And the Dodgers win by a score of two to nothing. Fine play by Pee Wee Reese and uh, out in front of the mound, they're grabbing Johnny Padres. They're pummeling him, pushing him around. The final score is Dodgers, two runs, five hits, no errors. The Yankees, no runs, eight hits, and one error. Bill Corum will review the highlights of today's game for you. Man, oh boy, oh Padres. This, this was something. This was as fine a World Series ball game as ever has been played almost, and certainly nobody ever pitched her more stout-hearted one than Johnny Padres of Witherby, New York, who stood out there this afternoon and defied all the whammies, all the jinxes, all the Yankees, even Mickey Mantle in a pinch-hitting role, and pitched a shutout to beat the Yankees for the first time since the Cardinals did it in 1942, and that was a long time ago. It looked as if Brooklyn was hanging on the ropes, but they had Johnny Padres and they had a little boy in left field who got in there just at the right time, little Sammy Amaros, who turned in most of, one of the most wonderful plays you ever saw. I've only got a minute, and now to wind up this World Series broadcast, let's pick up Frankie Frisch and some of those victorious Dodgers. Frankie, take over. Bob fans, this is, a, this is a real treat to have the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, I should say the world's champions, well, Mr. Mr. Better. Mr. Walter O'Malley. What do you think of your boys now, Walter? Well, Frank, we're very proud of them, and I'm delighted for all our wonderful Brooklyn fans in Brooklyn, Long Island, New Jersey, all over, that at long last we've brought this world's championship to Brooklyn. And without Buzzy and Fresco in the front office, and their wonderful staffs, Walter Austin and his great coaches, and these fine players, Frank, they couldn't have been done. But I'm mighty darn proud of the whole bunch of them. Well, you should be. They did a wonderful job. And congratulations to you, Mr. Thank Walter. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Walter Player. All right, we got a great little guy here. Come on up, Captain. Hello, Frank. Hey, fans, here's a great guy. Uh, Mr. Pee Wee Captain Reese did a tremendous Frank. job. Hey. How about that Padres, Frank? Hey, wasn't that tremendous? I never saw a kid that has so much courage as that boy had. I was just talking to the commissioner here, and we got talking about that every pitch, whenever he uh, took that wind up, he looked so determined as much to say, i got to get this guy out. i got to get him out. I don't know how he felt, but every pitch, it seemed like there was more tension built up on its side of me, so I'm sure it was on him, Frank. Hey. I've waited a long time for this. Ah, it's, it's oh, probably you're a grand guy. Lots of luck to you, Pee Wee. I get my best home. Come on, Roy. That's it. Come on, Roy. Fans, Roy Campanella. Hi, uh, Frankie. Hey. Oh. You getting hit today? Yeah, I got a little double there. I saw you hit one down that left field line. You got that bat right into that ball, and it felt pretty good, didn't it? But Frank, it's tough to see in this ballpark. Don't help me. Hey, Padre saw pretty good. Tell us something about now. You, you're the fellow that caught Johnny Padre. Believe it or not, Frankie, uh, every pitch I called Phil, he threw. Except the last pitch, I wanted him to throw a fastball. He shook me up. He said he wanted to throw a change. So he threw the change and got it out. out. Yes, but I mean, he had such fine control. He had everything. Everything. He looked like a guy that's been pitching for about oh, 25 years. He looked great. Oh, and uh, the captain, you uh, you fellas, yesterday you didn't look good at all. Well, uh, did you have a meeting before the game, or did you know to uh, say, hey, fellas, we got to win this ball? Game. Well, that's, uh, we did say that, Frank. Uh, uh, you know, we waited a long time to, to win one of these World Series, but I always said if we kept getting in one, we were bound to win one of them. Swell, fine. Well, thanks a lot. Hey, Roger. Right. right. Come on, Roger. Right, Roger. Roger had you on our show yesterday. That's right. What do you think of how you play World Series and on a World Championship ball club? Well, that's the greatest thing that ever happened to me, Frank. It's quite a thrill, isn't it, Roger? The greatest thrill. Now you're going back home and have a nice quiet winter and right. get set the next spring. Right. And you, well, should, you should win a lot of ball games. A lot of Oh, you, Roger. Oh, here's a fellow I gotta see. Here's one of the scout that uh, you scouted the Yankees and you scouted Cleveland, right? That's right, Frankie. And tell me something about uh, your scouting of these clubs. Well, the boys did a very good job, Frank, and uh, they pitched as well as they could, and it was a real team victory. We were all very proud of them. Fine, and you, you played a part in it. Hey, boys, come on, Uncle Buzzy. 
Fans, it's a, it's a delight for the old Flash to introduce to uh, our audience Mr. Buzzy Babesi, Vice President of the Brooklyn Dodgers. How do you feel? Are you a little... Uh... Well, Frank, I'm a little nervous, but did you ever see some courage out there today? Ah, oh, that kid was terrific. But you know what stood out to me? The whole team. Well, they were great. They played a fine defensive game all but that one lapse in the outfield, and that's liable to happen. Frank, they did it all year. They won the big one. Yes, oh, yeah. that's what you had to do. And um, now what's going to happen tonight? You know. You've been in that box. <laughs> you know, Frank. Oh, well, I, had, club, yeah. I, had, I had eight of them, Bye. and I liked them. Buzz, nice to have you on our show. Have a good time. Hey, Russell, Hi, man, man. to see you. There's a guy that did a fine job yesterday in the losing ball game. How many innings you pitched yesterday? Five and two-thirds, Frankie. Five and two-thirds. Did they, how many hits did they get? Four, I believe. Four and no runs. No runs. It's one of those things you say, well, if Russ Meyer had it started, we had uh, it's, uh, You know, you can always second-guess you, Frankie. You've had a lot of that happen to you in your life. Wonderful. Russ, nice to have you. Hey, Uncle Tom. Oh, Hello. Hello. How's everybody? Hey, you look a little like Marciano. Oh, I don't know how I look, but I do one thing. I feel good. That's good. Hey, uh, Marciano. Uh... <laughs> hey, how many hits today? None. Hey, I noticed they, uh, they were a little careful on your arms. Uh, somebody hit a line. I was, was going to tell me if I had to break a shoulder or a head. I was going to go. Well, you fellas did a fine job. You, you deserve uh, everything that came your way because you had the courage to go out there and you beat a great pitcher today, that what Tommy Fay. What a treat. How was Tommy Fay? No, Tommy wasn't fast, but he was something like Preacher Row. You know, spots. Oh, yeah. Different spots. He's almost given up his fastball. Uh, Tommy Brandon, he throws that. He just stayed with his slider and with his curveball. He just took the oil, especially hey. myself. Hey, Sandy! Hey, uh, everybody uh, happy in uh, Havana? Havana? I, uh, I want everybody happy. Everybody's happy. Uh, Sandy Amorose. <laughs> oh, hey, thanks for coming up here, Sandy Amorose. And, and, oh, wait a minute, i got to get Uncle John. Hey, have a nice winter. Hey, get down there, Sandy. Come on. Hey, John. How do you feel? Very good, Frank. Here's a fellow who's been the clubhouse man for the Brooklyn Dodgers for about... 40 years. 40 years. Hey, John, thanks kindly for coming on our show. And I hope you fans have enjoyed hearing from these very happy world champion Brooklyn Dodgers. What, ladies and gentlemen, but what could we say at this particular point except that the shadows are starting to lengthen across the playing field here at the Yankee Stadium? The diamond upon which two embattled ball clubs fought so valiantly here this afternoon to present to the crowd assembled perhaps the greatest finish to any of the fall classics. And for the first time in the history of baseball, the Brooklyn Dodgers become the world champions. And they'll mark the year of 1955 as the year that they have long been waiting for. So it's glee in Flatbush tonight and a bit of sorrow in the Bronx. The final totals for this ball game. To win for the Brooklyn Dodgers as Johnny Padres pitched a magnificent shutout. For Brooklyn, two runs, five hits, no errors, eight men left on. For the Yankees, no runs, eight hits, one error, and eight men left on. Tommy Byrne, who was magnificent in the second ball game and winning it, lost it here this afternoon.